All right. So in the previous video, I mentioned how I had 3D printed the cam degree wheel for the K25 and also the sprocket for the cam, the adjustable cam gear as well. So I, um, full disclosure, basically just copied what was an existing um, cam gear, which is a Rollmaster CS9000, I think is the, is the part number for that. Um, I don't actually have one. I just saw a photo of one and just kind of guessed how they'd done it more or less. Um, so there's 36 teeth on the outside of this. And then on the inside, they've put 13 holes, which basically works out to be like, um, because there's a two to one ratio between the crank and the cam wheel, uh, or the crank and the cam, uh, it's halved. That'll make more sense when I show it to you. I don't know if I'll do like a little diagram or something like that. See, normally I would, but it takes a long time. So I'm trying to make these more streamlined in the videos. Um, so if you've got questions, maybe just Ask me a question and I'll respond to that. Anyway, um, I need to figure out how I'm actually gonna mount this to the crank um, because even on ones that you can buy, sometimes they don't center onto the crank and I don't like that. Uh, I would like it to be as centered as possible. So I'll work something out. I don't know if I'll show you on that engine or I'll show you on the one that I've got on the stand. I'll figure something out. And once I've done that, I also need to determine a way that I'm going to measure the valve movement um, and the head. And again, normally this whole process would be a lot easier if it wasn't already in the car and assembled, but I just don't do anything the easy way apparently. I just do everything as difficult as possible. So uh, it's the consequences of my own actions that have led to this. So now I've got to deal with, it. yeah, anyway. Let's work out how we're going to measure the Making this bench is still, without a doubt, one of the best things that I've done. And I still haven't, oh God, I still haven't completely fitted out yet because I'm indecisive. But uh, I need this. And there's no glass on here. Uh, so, you know, not the greatest measuring tool. And uh, this one is in inches, which potentially can work pretty well with the way that the, the cams, the cam specs are written down. They're usually in imperial measurement. Uh, but I might also have metric one, I think. We'll see. We'll see. The quality of those obviously is not great, but I got a lot of them for like 10 bucks on Marketplace. Obviously I'd love to purchase some good dial gauges, but right now I don't even have my mill operational and I just haven't really had the need for anything that accurate until this moment. So we'll see how we go. So as I showed in the previous video, that needs to mount onto the crank bolt there. You can see that's just over the head of the nut. Um, so I need to work something out for that. But either way, rocker cover's got to come off. So let's do that. So it's actually kind of difficult to get this on a nice smooth angle for the accelerator. So I'm going to try and leave that attached to the bracket and pop that off. Put these back in so I don't lose them. And I just realized that they are not the same type of bolt. So I'm going to have to fix that too because now that I know, that'll drive me crazy. I realized that how much of the day I spend talking to myself until I started filming myself for these videos. And basically I just talk to myself and sing to the dogs all day. Now I'm gonna put some fuel everywhere because I'd rather this just be out of the way completely. Get off. Great. Oh, classic. I should just take this whole hose off do this. 14. Oh, should be a mechanic. Righto, I should get, no, I'll get a bag. Oh my God. I'm pretty sure this engine actually was out of a forklift being a 5k. Uh, and super low Ks from what I could tell. Okay, anyway, this is gonna be pretty painful. So, which one's intake? This one, um, I need to, somehow get the dial indicator on this valve. 
so that I can see when it's opening. Again, ideally, not only would it not be assembled, if it was assembled, I would have some helper springs uh, or test springs that I could take these valve springs out, put those in, and essentially they're just a way lighter gauge spring um, so that when I turn it over, it's much easier. And also when I'm feeling for the resistance, again, it's much easier. But we don't have that, so we're going to work with what we've got. So that's what I'm dealing with. I mean, anything's going to be better than the way it's set up now. So I'm just going to try and get it as close as I can. Um, and we'll go from there. It's not the perfect setup. I'm aware of that. Uh, but I just want to get the car running and everything's going to change later anyway. So in the spirit of not being a perfectionist, let's just get something done. So dial test indicator or dial indicator, not a test indicator. Um, as you can see there, as I move this with my finger, the dial moves. And we want to have this in the same plane as the valve directly on the same axis, because if it's off, then we're going to introduce error from the angle. This is a mag base, which as you could probably guess is a magnetic base. You flick it on, the magnet uh, is then active and will work on ferrous metals, but obviously will not work on aluminium. So I'm going to need to make up some sort of plate and configuration so that I can get this on there. I'm going to drill a hole in this plate and then I can mount this like that probably watching this like why don't you just put it there it's so obvious and I'll probably watch it back when I'm editing it and also think the same thing but right now this is what we're going with let's give this a clean up first as I always use hearing protection because I'm paranoid about losing my hearing but I also found an earwig in one of these once so now I need to check every time to make sure there's no earwigs in there today there's not So uh, I can't even remember what I was going to do. Put a hole there so that I can mount it. Let's do that. Normally I'm very particular about my tools and most things I like to look after them. Uh, and I hate to see people using calipers as a scribe. However, these are a cheap pair that I bought specifically for that purpose. So don't cringe too hard when you see me use them like that. I'm pretty sure those bolts are 8 mil. So that's a 4 mil radius, so we'll go 10 mil in from either edge. Do I have a center drill? Yes. Am I going to use the center drill? No. I found, oh, I found this chuck that I needed. Like the other, oh, is that, is that the one I just put down? Did I just put that down there? Yes, damn it. I found the chuck the other day, now I don't know where I put it. God damn it. Oh, it's not even the chuck, is it? It's the key. It's the key for the chuck. Um, and I don't know where I put it. So I've got this stupid one, which doesn't work properly, but it's a stupid drill. So that makes sense. I'm sure that I'll find it as soon as I finish what I'm doing. And seeing as I've come so far already, might as well round that bad boy off. Man, I hate it when there's no daylight savings. I feel like I'm really tempting fate at the moment by not putting something here to stop me dropping things in there. So if I do in the future, here's me predicting the future a bit higher. That's actually pretty good. And take this off and clean all of it. Uh, it's not great. I'm gonna get too carried away with this. Just a brief, quick tidy up.
So it's a new day and I've given it a bit of thought and I'm just going to buy a new dial gauge. Uh, I will keep that one, I will fix it at a later date when I have the patience to sit down and do it, but right now it's just going to lead into being another long-term project, uh, side project, whatever. So anyway, um, I've ordered a dial gauge, so I need to wait for that to come so that I can proceed with more on the engine. I can still obviously determine how I'm going to mount that cam wheel which I will do, uh, but you're going to need to wait to see what happens with that. So in the meantime, let's look at some turbo stuff for the KE70. You'll see on the KE70 it has extractors or an aftermarket um, exhaust headers. Uh, this is what the factory manifold looks like, most people know that. And you can see that they are attached the intake to the exhaust. So as I said in the previous video, I plan to make this as simple and straightforward as possible. Of course, I need a bolt. Well, oh, that's going to tip off. That'll stay. That'll stay. So, as I was saying, pretty much one of the simplest ways that you can mount a turbo to an engine is to keep your existing exhaust manifold and put what's called a J-pipe. It's called that because it's usually the shape of a J. And what that is, is a pipe that will come off the regular outlet for the exhaust manifold and instead of running down to the exhaust you will pull it up or into whatever position you would like to mount the turbo run it to your turbo and then run your exhaust as you would normally um, sometimes they can work pretty well i mean they do work pretty well um, there are a lot of benefits to actually keeping a factory cast manifold usually a thicker wall uh, usually a better flow um, and when you're not running a full-on race engine usually fine don't look as nice um, and they also usually require more room so when you do a custom install you can pretty much put the turbo wherever you want and make the manifold to suit which is what i plan to do on the k25 but like i said budget race car for the k70 um, let's have a look so as you can kind of see in here there is some um, heat wrap on what is the exhaust manifold. Let me take this off. So it's a little bit hard to see with the air filter on, but this is the exhaust manifold and you can see where it runs all the way. You can see where the exhaust, where the heat wrap is still. So I will remove that and put a factory manifold back on and then we'll run a J pipe off of there. And you can see is the bottom of the intake manifold so you can imagine from before where the exhaust manifold will bolt to um, and then it'll come out sort of around here from memory so likely the simplest way to do this will be to run a J off there through here and probably somewhere around here so I'll move the battery to the boot luckily I've already made up some brackets for that and probably gives me a good excuse to go to quad headlights and turbo intake. Sometimes something that people will do as well is run the exhaust you know underneath the engine and over to the other side of the engine bay. There is obviously quite a bit more room over here to play with if you were to do that but then you're going to need more pipes. Uh, generally I think personally it just looks a bit messier and overall just a bit more work. Whereas alternatively if I was going to put in a bit more effort which is probably what I'll do on the KE25 you can move the alternator to the other side and then that frees up a fair bit of space down there you know alternator turbo similar sort of size and configuration there something could work but like i said we're keeping things simple so we are going to stick with j pipe probably on the passenger side of the engine bay and uh, move the battery to the boot i think still pretty straightforward uh, you could move the battery to the other side of the engine bay if you wanted to do that But like I said, I've already got some brackets that I've designed for that um, Which I can show you. Maybe I'll cut in part of an old reel Here Remember a couple of months ago when I said I was gonna make some battery trays? Yeah, these ones. Well now they're ready and I'm, I'm jacked. jacked. I'm jacked to the test! These trays are 100% manufactured in Australia, designed by me, locally cut, folded, powder coated and laser etched. And then you can pretty much mount it wherever you want. Here, 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 probably not here. You might also want to put it in a different car. Yeah, don't worry about that. Magic. These are available for purchase on the website now. And there's a couple more things to follow as well. Like this, 
and these. Often when you buy a second-hand car, you receive no record of ownership, no service history, and no history of the car in general. It can also be difficult to keep track of what custom parts you've put in, what fluids you used last time, and tricky part numbers that you managed to find but now you can't remember. So I made a journal for you to keep all that sort of information. It also comes with a sticker, and I've got a whole lot of them available. So what's next? Um, I need to design up a flange for the exhaust manifold and get ready to run the J-pipe really. Uh, we're gonna, gonna need to make a decision on what turbos we're gonna use. So I've got quite a few laying around actually, so we probably could do some pretty cool back-to-back -back testing really. Um, originally the plan was to go to CT12 turbo, which is quite small, so for 1J. Uh, but then I've also got a T25 off a 180SX, I've got a T28, I've got a ball bearing and a journal um, T28, and then I think I've got like a third spare 3076 as well. So we'll see, we'll see one thing at a time, but I will need the J pipe. And regardless of what turbo I put on the end of it, that flange off the J will not change off the exhaust. So I'm gonna design that up now and get that printing so that I can test it. And then I will try and sweet talk one of my mates who's got a water jet cutter to cut me one. So yeah, probably stick around for that one in the next episode. And let me know what you think.